Oh, that was a sweet moment to start off on. Yeah, you love your doggy friends, don't you, kitten? Where you go? All right. Just like Pumpkin. No, it was your friend. Oh, not just like Pumpkin. Look who showed up. That never happens. Hi, Pumpkin. <laughs> she doesn't seem very thrilled about being caught on camera. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. My brain stuttering. It has been an incredibly busy couple of weeks. I mentioned last week, maybe the week before. I don't even know. When did this all start? I'm going to cut to the chase. I have nothing planned for this week. And now I can fill in the gaps there. This is how I dry the mandolin. Is that not appropriate? It seems to work really well. A couple weeks ago, started a project getting the patio resurfaced, which meant getting everything off the patio. It took like a week and a half. They didn't tell me when they were coming. So I thought that it would be a one week project. And then they said, eh, we won't be there because of the weather. And I said, okay, that's fine. It was last minute notice. It's like the day or two days before this video or the Saturday videos were supposed to come out. So it was like a Thursday. So I said, okay, well, I need to go plant shopping. No big deal. Can make it work. Took y'all to a nursery, had plenty of things I needed to get. Got lots of fun cordolins and you see it. Elephant ears, all that fun stuff. And then the weather kept staying bad. I was thinking, okay, well, one more week. That'll work. And then can have the whole video of resurfacing the patio and it's a clean slate and it's just going to be so magnificent. Well, weather again so they won't be here until the day of this video that you're watching right now they won't be here to actually do the stuff until then so i don't here i am without a video again and i don't need anything from the nurseries so i'm not just gonna go out and buy plants for no reason that's stupid and everything in the grow space is pretty good right now I'm in the hardening off time of year, so I have lowered the temperatures in here quite a bit, so things are very low fuss and low maintenance. I haven't even watered in probably 10 days, which I should probably come out here and do a watering, but that's not video worthy either. You guys don't want to see me water plants, and it's also very difficult to do that in a video because I have like the cameras and the lights and everything, and it's just, it's a big old mess trying to pull that off in a video, and the audio gets weird. What's going on with you? yelling out on the inside is it because i haven't watered you in 10 days that's probably that might have something to do with it yeah soil's dry okay i would much rather have some dried up fronds than fronds from things being too wet all right good to know so i do need to water but again that's not really youtube worthy i think y'all would get pretty bored with that and we do this every time I open the laundry room door. She runs in here and then she goes floppy and plays dead. All because she wants to hang out and hunt the parrot. I'm not going to let him bite you. Calm down. Here we go. Kitten, you feeling better? She's got her fix of leg on the ground and staring at the parrot. And I can't do anything outdoors because the power washing just got done late last night. So everything really needs to stay clean before the new coating and pigment goes down. This video is supposed to be when I do a garden tour because it's the end of the month, but can't do that either because I don't want to ruin the big reveal. The new pot came for the Dragon's Breath Peperomia. Got that repotted. I don't think that would have been worthy of putting into a video either because it took about 10 seconds. It just popped right in there. Really likes being under the belt. Throwing up new foliage left and right. Don't mind the Semper Vivum back there. It's fine. I do have a new plant that came in the mail. Not much to see, though, because it's dormant. This is a curcuma sangria. It's really pretty orange and slightly pink reddish flowers on them. It's a very pretty plant. Yeah, it's dormant, so that's just a pot of dirt. Not much to talk about with it when it's just a pot of dirt. You'll get the point with that one. It's going to take some time to get to see anything from that. It is really nice out. I wish I could film more out here, but I don't want to give away the surprise of what next week do you want to just a quick preview maybe just a very quick preview look at look at there's so much space so much space so much room for activities hardest part i don't know why i focused on these moving these wasn't that hard the patio everything had grown out <laughs> there were roots on the ground over here up against this area just a pad of roots and mulch that had come out nearly two feet so I had to chop that all up and dig it out. It took a really long time. Nothing can be touching the patio when the stain goes down, when everything's been scrubbed. So I had to edge it a lot, which I usually do that every year, but it was for some reason a lot harder to do this year. It took a lot longer than usual, but I'm glad to have that done. So like the paths are nice, wide and open again. 
you didn't see it before, but just trust me, it's a big improvement. And some of these slopes are getting kind of intense. You know, it's the way things go when you have these big, deep beds and things start to pull forward over time. Gravity, that's what happens. You mulch and more things move forward. You mulch, more things move forward. I'm realizing that I need to start remembering when I trench these out in the springtime that I need to be taking that soil and throwing it as far back as possible and not directly on top because that ends up just pushing more things forward. So I haven't really been turning things over probably the appropriate way. Oh, these things sucked to move. I forgot that once upon a time, these used to blow over a lot when I had queen pumps in them. So when I potted these hydrangea trees into them, I weighted these things down. Like there's old dumbbells in there. There's concrete bricks. There's giant chunks of cement and cinder block. It, these pots probably weigh like 350-ish. They are too big to get on the dolly. So that was a problem. My brother-in-law came over. He helped me. And instead of moving these to the driveway, which is where I've put almost everything else, I went with Path of Least Resistance, which was to just scoot them from over there to here. I just dug out big areas in the garden to put these big pots. Seems like the safest thing to do. One, so that nobody gets hurt. Two, so don't break these pots. It costs a fortune to replace them because the way price of them pottery has gone up over the years. And whatever my other point was, I forgot what it was. The saying, don't want to break the pot, don't want anybody to get hurt. I guess that's basically the gist of it. There was another really good point, but I don't remember what it was. A stress on the plant, maybe? I don't know. Oh, the garden hoses. They don't reach the driveway. And I still need to be able to water these things. So that's another reason this worked out well. It is, it's nice. Even though things aren't done out here yet, just the nice clean lines. I'm loving it. It's one of my favorite things to do out here. It's a lot of work. It's something that I usually spend multiple days on instead of just knocking it out one afternoon like I ended up doing yesterday. But it looks so good. It's so worth the work, having those nice clean lines. I need to backfill with more gravel and get them looking good again. I think I need to do more work on them in some areas. Like, look over here, this drainage spot, there's barely anything there. I need to come in and cut, back up, cut more of a gradual slope here. Probably in, like, this whole area right there. That whole, should I not use my foot? I'm learning people have things about feet, good and bad. I think it's y'all with the good that has me wondering if I should not show the feet more than the people who don't like them. So yeah, that's been fun. Tulip preview. Look, they're starting to do things. Look, like, not much, but something. These over here that I can't really get to. <laughs> they're looking pretty good. Something going on there. Does this count as a garden tour? I really hope not. Everything looks so bad. And there's just stuff piled up everywhere because the whole point was just had to get everything off of the patio for this project to get rolling. So I have some bags of sand that I will be using right around here, but not yet. It didn't make sense to put down sand and then trench everything out and then dump everything on top of it. I need to wait until I can move things, get the irrigation lines pulled up and, you know, all that. It's just so much. So many moving parts. Things are coming up patchy in these bamboo containers. Got a lot going on here with the tete-a-tetes in this container. Not so much in this one. Can you tell which one gets more sun? This one. It's about three feet to the left of that one. That Look at that. What a huge difference that makes. Tons and tons more growth. Hyacinths are starting to do something. It doesn't help if I've had to scoot them back off the patio. So now they're shaded, but that should only be for a few days. Look at how nice this little spot looks. I have an alpine scene going on with the blue cedar, and the two Japanese maples, and the fun airy texture from the green giant arb but back there. It looks so nice. I really just, I really, this spot right here, just the blue with the red and that nice green lacy foliage it looks so nice. I can't remember, what are you? Other than something that I need to prune probably two weeks ago. I think this is, it's a bonfire, no, not bonfire. Rhode Island red Japanese maple. Very small one. That one is one that I was training for bonsai and uh, fell behind on that. That's why I need to get there and do a prune. You're supposed to really do it right as they're flushing out. If you have them in a root trainer pot, which I don't, I need to get this into a root training pot. This video is really just going to be my random thoughts for probably 15 minutes straight. Is that okay with everybody? I hope so. If a bit much might seem like an anxious mess, I'm not. I'm just like so scatterbrained because of these projects all going on simultaneously. I did think about running out to the nurseries for this video and planting up this succulent 
frame here, but I can't really do that because I can't make any messes out here. I can't spill dirt or anything because they're coming out, like I said, to coat all this stuff tomorrow. So that wouldn't work. I would like to purge this whole area and basically get rid of or redistribute everything and come in and clean that out. But again, it's so close to the patio that just got scrubbed. I don't want to do that either. I think that would be a bad idea. This is fun opening up the book of all kinds of fun future projects to do. But nothing I can get done right now. You like my pottery pile? Yeah, there's all kinds of junk over here I had to move. Shouldn't call it junk. It's nice pottery. The bamboo's starting to put up some growth a little bit earlier than I had expected. Again, the one on the left doing more than the one on the right. Not the most ideal location for it to be putting up new growth. This is where I usually plant annuals, but it was bound to happen eventually, right? They're going to spread. That's what they do. That's what I want them to do. I want them to grow. It's good to see, though. I like seeing big spikes coming up there. Spikes. Big shoots starting to push up. Because these took such a bad hit winter of 2022, right? That was when we had that really bad cold, December of 2022. It was basically the same thing as a really bad cold we had January of 2024. So maybe it was 2023. You get what I'm saying. Really bad cold. Not this past... 12 month period but the 12 month period before then something like that an arctic blast basically wiped out probably 60 percent of the canes that are in here so this year i wrapped them with some heat cable and bagged them when we had really bad cold where it was dropping below zero the whole intention there was to hopefully keep them evergreen they'll usually flush back out not always i always end up with some that just die off on the inside that happens i can prune those out and that'll look a lot better but i want nice big thick canes and to get that they need to be overwintered properly this is promising like i said i wish it were putting up that cane somewhere back there but that's all right it probably will be putting up canes from the back at some point i wonder if the niagara i wonder if the black bamboo is that doing anything i'd be shocked it seems way too early if y'all remember this is the worst garden tour ever. I had a clump of black bamboo that was right here. It's never where I wanted it to be, but I had originally planted it down there and it had spread over here and back there. And we had a bad winter that killed off everything except for the clump that was right here. So I left that clump alone for about five years to let it mature. Then I dug it up and moved it to the back last year. I was really happy to have been able to get that moved. I don't... It's just, I think it's way too early. There's actually something going on down there. It's not much. It's not promising for nice big growth, but it's something. So I'll take it. It means it's alive. When you transplant bamboo, you just never really know what you're going to get after the first winter, especially with a variety that's only marginally winter hardy where I live. So that's good. It's much, much more appropriate spot for it. You can tell it did take a very big beating during the winter. It always does, though. It's nowhere near as hardy as the, what is it, the Ariolo Stachys, the yellow, just typical yellow grove bamboo. Yeah, the black bamboo never does as well for me. Crinamolids are starting to come back up. Looking good, kind of. I wasn't really worried about them. They come back pretty well. They look good every year. They're a tough one. Nice green growth. Not much to say about it because it's just, you know, gross little gooey parts coming up. I know, already talked about it, but look at how beautiful that flower is on this tulip. Can you, like, really get, I'm going to get it nice and close. It's hard to do that without shading it. This is terrible camera work. There we go. That's better. That's beautiful. I think the variety on these was called, like, Mauve Monet, maybe. They're from Color Blends. It was a mix of purple, orangish, yellow, and red double flowered tulips. They're very pretty. And the flowers are long lasting. These purple ones started to open up, I don't know, over a week ago. They haven't done much. They're just now starting to like really push out and pop open, but they just held up like little purple balls for the last 10 or so days. It's been really nice. Sometimes tulips, you know, they're short lived and that's one of the reasons I'm not always as into them. You can kind of see what I'm talking about over here. These have started a little bit later than the others. These little purple balls that stay down low. And then they very slowly come up and start to open up and get much bigger, more open flowers. Purple is consistently coming up before the other colors. There's some ostrich ferns coming up. Those are great. Remember, like this stuff, all this junk, not normally here. There's normally better spots for things. I had to move things in order to put other things in their places. How did you get knocked over? That's a dumb question. I know how it got knocked over. The wind has been unbelievable 
the last few days. That's a soft serve cypress. Can't keep it there, but I do kind of like it there. I like having that spot of green. All the tropicals from the plant hall saw these last week, right? They're looking pretty good. I had to move them in for several days because we were dropping to the lower 30s with some rain and some cold. I left the end sets out because they're right by the house and I knew they could take it and they took it just fine. They're even pushing out some new growth. I want to put the cordolins through those temperatures with the moisture, but then they became victim to the kitten who was obsessed with shredding and pulling and tearing at their lower foliage. It's all right, they'll push out more growth from above. You can prune out that stuff from down below. It's all novel to her, she's still learning. New leaf opened up on this alocasia here. Cannas, not cannas, bananas and alocasias and colocasias when they're freshly shipped. Usually they look a little bit rough when they're coming up this far north. I had a patch of daffodils coming. This is all, this will all make more sense next week. All this stuff that's splayed out all over the place here. I had a patch of daffodils that were coming up that I planted, I don't know, I want to say in the fall, but it's really in the winter time, right here. That's how far this garden bed had spread over the patio. It was gradual, so I hadn't noticed it. The thing is, it was organic. Like, it didn't line up to part of the steps. It came out, like, at a nice angle. So I really thought it was just the shape of the patio. It happened so slowly that it tricked me. And I was going through and cutting, and I was like, oh, I planted the daffodils, like, on top of a root mass. It was on top of the patio. So I had to dig those up and move them. There they are. Like them. I think these are the precocious. They open up an orange color, and they slowly fade to this peachy pink. I really like them. Oh, the apple espaliers, they're blooming. I can't really, I can't get to them because this is, I have all my furniture in the way. There's no good path to get to them. So we just have to trust the power of the zoom here. No, that's gonna be pretty grainy, isn't it? Well, you get the picture. I wish I could get over there, but I'm really blocked off. And now it just feels weird like I'm filming my neighbor's house. There's the other one down there. One of them, is a honey crisp and the other one's a liberty i think that was difficult risking life and limb here for y'all <laughs> not that anybody asked me to what are you that just says apple i left the tag on these for a reason so i could rip oh there we are honey crisp one of them is a honey crisp and then this one that doesn't want to focus for some reason doesn't say apparently i didn't save the tag on this one or it got blown away i don't know but i'm pretty sure it's liberty something like that they're supposed to be good pollinators with each other and there are only so many options to choose from. Look at their little buds, isn't that exciting? There's some that are opened up, but they're backlit. They're white with pink on the back. You get it. I don't know if they will produce apples this year or not. They didn't do anything last year, which isn't all that surprising, right? Because they were planted as they were flowering. So they lost most of their flowers in the process of being driven around. And I think you're supposed to avoid them pruning their first year in the ground too, right? I think. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. When I plant fruit trees, I just, just let them go and do their thing, do a dormant oil, keep them pruned properly. If they want a fruit, I let them fruit. But I'm not sure if that's what you're supposed to do. Oh, there's a cute little cluster of apple blossoms. That's so nice. Didn't really get to see that last year. Fun to see things come about. The perennials over here, they're not doing much yet. Looks like some of the salvia and little bilias are starting to come up. The so blue jangles. <sighs> Uh, there's nothing in there that's disappointing. It really should be putting something up by now. These are hardy all the way to zone four. So if that didn't survive the winter, that's not great. It really should have though, because it did pretty well over here last year. Is the other one doing anything? See, this one, it's got some stuff coming up. Not much, but a little bit starting to wake up. Yeah, and that one, this one's over on the other side of the other one. It's got some growth coming up, so I really feel like that one should be doing something, but it's not, so I don't know. The nice thing about the blue jingles is that they'll bloom from old growth and new growth. You can see I don't think anything's going to be happening in here with old growth, because that's all dead. So, I guess it didn't really matter. There's our other varieties. I have an older variety here that I need to dig up and do something else with because it's take up a ton of space. I don't even remember what this one's called, but only blooms on old growth. So when it dies all the way down to the ground in the winter, I rarely get any flowers out of it. Sometimes it'll put up a few, but all this, this all died in the winter. I don't think any of that's alive. Yeah, so I got to cut all that back, open up the crown the center of the growth for things to start to take off but i don't think that that's going to do much also looks like this may have divided off 
on its own into two separate clumps. It doesn't look like there's a separate clump of hydrangea over there. I didn't plant that. It was supposed to be one. I haven't done any dividing on it either, so I'm not really sure how that happened. Who remembers this one? Remember Fort McNair Buckeye? And it looks like it did not do well with that cold snap we had back in January. So it happens when it's very nice and pleasant in 50s and 60s and then it plummets to negative 12 outside. Sorry, there's a big spider crawling up my leg and I had to shake it off. I don't think there's anything left in here. I've gone through, broken off a lot of the stems. I originally started by using clippers and making clean cuts, by the way. I've gone far enough into it where I'm pretty sure it's dead, otherwise I wouldn't just be messing with it. You know, you can just kind of tell when a tree's dead, like it just feels dead. That sucks. I was really excited about this tree. Oh, did you go swimming? Did you go swimming? I was going to talk about the Rose of Sharon, but you get it, right? It got blown over. Now I need to dig it up. It's done. Not a lot of explaining to do there. Yeah, you're all wet now. You're wet and you're getting mud on the patio. That wasn't supposed to happen. Took my eyes off them for what? A minute and a half and you're getting the water? Come on. Keeps trying to creep up on me. I keep telling him to get back. This is where I've been sitting <laughs> when I need some shade. The sun is so intense, and with the pigment having faded off the patio, it's blinding to the eyes. Camera balances out light pretty well, so I don't know if it's going to come across as scorching as and as intense. But in areas like this, where it's all faded, it is blinding. I have a chair pulled out over there where I was sitting before the sun came over the patio, but it's it is intense over there. I have sunscreen on, but. I don't think enough for that kind of intensity. So it's been hanging out here in my little plant fort. I don't mind it. Very cozy. A nice view of the windmill palm and all the fun little cordelins and colorful things around me. Got the new plant delights in the mail. It's only catalog that I still like to get in paper format. I don't really know why because they do releases sometimes once a month of new plants. So the catalog is, it's nice. It's just something enjoyable about sitting back and flipping through it and seeing the pictures right above everything and being able to compare them all together instead of, you know, on a web page, you get a brief description of everything, but you have to click on them to go in and actually see what's going on with the plants. It's just kind of tradition at this point. I've been getting these catalogs since 2006. That's a long time. It's almost 20 years. They've got some good stuff in here. This Espedistra, Hanado, Hanado, Hanado Rock, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. But it's a beautiful one. I think I ordered that. I do my plant delights orders usually in late December, early January. And then I end up wanting to order more things because they release more things. Just, you know, a couple internet pages worth of things a month. So that's why I usually end up having multiple orders. There are some fun things in here. Bob Marley, that's one of my favorites. It's basically a Tropicana, but stays smaller, which is great because the Tropicana your typical can of, those get huge. They can really be a bit much sometimes. What I was really excited about, not the Redemption. Y'all, I think, will be seeing those everywhere. If not this year, the next year, they'll be all over the place. It was, I know it was a yucca, so just go right to the back. Put my camera down for this, but too late for that. Aloe folia, I've always had trouble saying that. Mediopicta, it's a variegated aloe folia. I used to have one of these out here, and it was one of my favorite plants. It got probably four or five feet tall, and it was right here. It was was planted further back and it just kind of curved out and crept its way up. And that's when I lost it because they're not super cold hardy. I think it says zone seven on there. Does it even say? Where is the zone on this one? $26. Why, why don't I see a... Oh, I was looking at the wrong spot. Duh. Yeah, 7A, 60 inches tall. So it doesn't get huge. Very spiky. So the issue I had with it was that it was creeping up over the edge of the patio so it really not just over like it was at a sharp angle up and over where people had to walk and it was very spiky and very dangerous and also it was more exposed to the elements during the winter when it was moving out and over everything and getting further away from the house so i ended up losing it when we had a really bad freeze one year i think there was an ice storm and that took it out but that was a plant that i just randomly found at a nursery it was just a variegated aloe folia which is a yucca that i never even see for sale in the area in st louis that's not typically one that people sell it was like 18 bucks i think i had three of them they were in one gallon containers but they were nice and big when i got them that is something i keep showing the wrong one there it is 50 dollars. did i order multiples of those i hope not i know i definitely ordered one of them but hopefully not multiples for 50 bucks that's kind of crazy especially since you know when i originally had found it 
I think they were grown by, uh, I don't want, maybe it was Monrovia. No, I don't think it was Monrovia. Who was it? Plants that work, maybe? Color works? I'm trying to remember. I think the pot was purple. We're talking 10 years ago, so it's hard to remember, but I'm excited to be getting a new one of those in the mail. So that is one that I would snatch up if you want a really fun tropical looking plant. You don't live some place that's really tropical. And then one that I am really excited about. This is so informal. I should be doing this on the computer with things up on the screen, but that's not happening in this video. Recurvifolia Mellow Yellow. Variegated recurvifolias are not easy to come by, at least not in the U.S. I don't know what it's like overseas. Y'all usually have better options. There was one that I think was either called Banana Boat or Margaritaville, or maybe those are two separate ones, both of recurvifolias. One might be a Gloriosa. I don't remember. It's been so long since I've looked into it. But I've never been able to find them for sale, and the variegation on them is really pretty. Isn't that nice? Zone 7A, the recurvifolias, they only get, oh, they say 6B. Never mind. 6B and up. They only get 48 inches tall, but they have a fun little trunk on them, a nice weeping habit. They look a lot like a Dracaena, which these are not Dracaenas, but kind of like the, uh, well, just your Indivisas or Australias even, but they stay a lot smaller and they have the weeping graceful habit to their foliage and having one that's variegated is even more fun. Not because like variegation is rare or anything. It is in this circumstance. It's not a plant you find very often at all but because it makes them stand out more and you get more of that Dracaena vibe, even though it's hardy all the way to zone 6B. Purplicious Mangave, isn't that a pretty one? I love that one. That would be a fun one to have around. It's one of the more tropical ones, but you know with Mangaves, they're really easy to overwinter. It has a fun purpley blue hue to it. That's a plant that stood out to me. There was another Mangave in here that was pretty cool, Praying Hands. Look at that one. That's a neat Mangave. Oh, and Pineapple Punch. Pretty sure I ordered one of those. That should be here, I think, by the end of the month is when I set those to arrive. There was something else that I saw in here, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. And I want to make sure to talk about it, but I don't remember what it was. It was probably one of the agaves. There are multiple pages of agaves in here. And Hardy Lantana. I have some good options for Hardy Lantanas perennial types that are sterile and won't take over. I think it's probably time to go. That was kind of bottom of the barrel flipping through a catalog on camera. <laughs> There's nothing else I can do out here. Got to keep things clean, have things dry and as dirt free as possible for the coatings to go down tomorrow. And that'll all be in next week's video going through the whole process. There'll be more explanations of things that have been done out here. I really didn't want everybody to see this before it was done in the middle. I wanted there to be a video that had a beginning with a mess, a middle with the cleaning, and an end with things being new and fresh. But hey, what can you do? Just the way things go, and sometimes it's got to roll up the punches, and this week's punch was that it was just wasn't going to happen. So here we are. But truly, thank you for hanging out through this hot mess of a not a garden tour. I wouldn't call this a garden tour. I have no idea what I'll call this video. Maybe I'll call it not a garden tour. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your gardens, your bulbs coming up, starting to do some spring planting. I don't know if you've noticed, I'm skipping most of the spring stuff this year, not really going to do the pansies and all that because other projects are happening. I'd rather focus that chunk of my gardening budget to perennials and evergreens to get planted up here along the fence and in some other spots this year. So this doesn't make sense. Spend the money on things that are only going to be around at this point for like four to six weeks. Nah, I say that now, but cut to me in two weeks planting up a hanging basket full of pansies or something. It wouldn't shock me at all. Anybody waiting on some fun plant orders? We've got some good stuff coming in the mail. Fun thing about doing the orders back in like January and December is that by the time they show up, I'm like, hey, what did I order? I don't even remember. It's always a fun surprise. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? There's a kitten <laughs> trying to get me through the window. Right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.